My name is Marion Chambers. I'm a research associate with the Colorado Forest Restoration Institute at Colorado State University. Okay, great. And can you just paint a picture for a radio audience of where we are? Yeah, absolutely. So we're standing in the middle of the 2002 um, Hayman Fire, which occurred kind of west of Colorado Springs. And what we're seeing is um, a very large high severity burn patch where the vast majority of the trees have died. When this fire occurred, um, the fire burned for about a month overall. It's currently Colorado's largest known wildfire, although we're having a fire that's a burning that um, may actually exceed this one in size. It's a complex situation um, to how we've gotten to these forest conditions that we have currently in montane ecosystems. Probably the largest driver is the fact that we've suppressed fires in these um, systems for the last hundred plus years. And the challenge with suppressing fires in these forested ecosystems is that they are frequent fire systems. So they thrive on fire that frequently runs through these forests every seven to 30 years. And so when we don't have a fire that comes through these kinds of um, forests, then we're losing a lot of the ecosystem service that pro fire provides, such as thinning the, the baby trees out, um, recycling nutrients into the soil, allowing some of the ponderosa pines lower limbs to kind of get licked up with fire so that they can drop those lower limbs and grow larger um, and more fire tolerant as they age and mature. There's other land management components that are a part of this story as well, including grazing, um, logging, and then, of course, I believe that climate change is a component of that. Um, things have been getting hotter and drier. The confluence of these complicated issues are resulting in forests that are overly dense, um, are, have a species composition that's different than what they used to be in the past. So we have more shade tolerant, fire intolerant species that have kind of infilled um, with the lack of fire that has been coming through these forests. And then the ponderosa pine, which is fire tolerant, tend to be growing a little bit too close to each other. And so there's a really high risk that trees can spread fire from one crown to the other. It only takes a careless moment to turn this into this. Don't let forest fires be your fault. Make sure your fire is dead out. Remember, only you can prevent forest fires. You know, putting out your campfires is a really important thing to do. But also, um, there's a couple of things to do to avoid these big, large, high severity wildfires to start out with. And one is to do forest restoration treatments. And that's essentially doing mechanical or manual thinning of these overly dense forests. And that's particularly in the montane zone. So um, ponderosa pine or dry conifer um, ecosystems. That kind of thinning or cutting is really to promote the opportunity to reintroduce fire, either prescribed fire, controlled fire, onto the landscape and reintroduce those really crucial ecosystem services to these forested ecosystems. And that will lower the um, wildfire risk in these kind of overly dense um, forests that we have on the front range of Colorado. I can see that they've actually cut a lot of trees. They've thinned a lot of trees. Mm -hmm. What's happened here is that, you know, they've probably reduced crown fire risk, but by leaving a lot of this, there's an, an increase in surface fire risk. However, if they are able to introduce fire back into this landscape, this will likely all get burned. Mm -hmm. And then we might have some, you know, small percentage of tree mortality associated with a prescribed burn. But that's really what we're trying to achieve with forest restoration is not to restore it to what it looked like in the past, but really it's more about how do we create a forests that are more resilient to climate change, um, that are more resilient to allowing us to reintroduce fire the way that, that forests really require, um, at least these dry conifer forests. This really granitic soil that we have 
is extremely erodible. And so it's really, you know, you can see it's like gravel on the top. All of this sediment, once there was rain um, events following the wildfire, this sediment went down into reservoirs like that. So because of these wildfires, you'd naturally get different kinds of chemical components coming off of these burned landscapes, both you know, from the dead trees and the bark that's starting to decompose. And so the water quality was another really big issue. Once a large high severity fire does occur, there's a lot of other things that we can do as well. And one of those um, would be particularly to plant seedlings within these high severity burn areas. There's a lot of people who professionally work on these issues um, that are working together across boundaries, um, across professions. Um, lots of different people with different opinions and different values and different goals that are working together to find commonalities who are willing to share risk together and who are willing to throw all of their resources and capacity at solving some of these issues. So that's what gives me hope. What I would love to see a little bit more of is funding and policies that support our managing agencies to do the kind of work that needs to be done. There's always going to be capacity issues, always going to be resource issues, but right now our federal and state and county agencies that do a lot of forest management, are they're struggling. They, they need more capacity, they need more resources. Um, in particular, to avoid big, large disturbances like these big high severity wildfires. So they need more capacity and, and resources to do more forest restoration treatments, to reintroduce fire to the landscape. As our climate is changing, as temperature is increasing, as drought is increasing, we're gonna see some new and novel things happen in our forests all over the West um, and really all over the world that I think are really interesting. And in my opinion, forests are the lungs of the world. Forests are the filters of our water. Um, they provide an immense amount of important wildlife habitat and recreational opportunities for humans. And so they're incredibly important. And so to me, what I would really like to do with the rest of my career is to think about how humans are interacting with our landscape and, and what we should be expecting out of the future and what we should do, if anything. So that's really the stuff that gets me really excited. <laughs>